62 Chevy, it's a home for four With a dog and two kids and another at the door They were robbed last night on Central when the car broke down Now they're sleeping on a side street near downtown What can be done about this problem? They all say wring their hands It's a scar upon the face of this land Let's move them out, let's move them on, let's keep it quiet, don't let on that they are sleeping in the streets in the good old USA. Yes, they're sleeping in the streets in the good old USA. They are living in the streets in the good old USA. Ditching school, hanging out wherever you want. No parents telling you what to do or when to do it. Sometimes that sounds like a great life, but for homeless teens like I was, it's a nightmare. Samantha was a homeless teen for three years. She discovered there's nothing fun about being homeless. The reality is hunger, fear, cold, and not knowing from night to night where you're going to sleep. When I first went on the street, I had a lot of couches I could stay on. And then I didn't because people were tired of me laying on their couch. So um, I stayed at Morningside Park because I didn't know where to go to sleep, so I didn't. And I stayed up for about a week and a half with no drugs or anything keeping me up. It was just on my own because I was afraid to fall asleep. And then I was sitting at Morningside Park on the bench and I just fell asleep. My friend Jackie fell asleep at Roosevelt Park, woke up at UNM. She had marks all over her neck, um, bump on her head. They told her she had a concussion. She doesn't have any recollection of what happened, and you know maybe it's better for her that she doesn't remember. But it's obvious, you know, what went on. And um, she was by herself. There was one house that we stayed at um, that recently got bulldozed, actually, but. It started with five people staying there. It was really nice, really quiet. Then more and more people started coming, and there were people like going to the bathroom in the corners of the rooms, <laughs> and it got really nasty. And then because there was so much traffic in and out, police came. I was staying on this little like a utility shed at UNM. I was staying up there, and you could see there were windows that were above where we were staying, and so the people who were there could see us, and sometimes they would call police to come and get us down. Most homeless teens find themselves homeless due to being abused at home, using drugs, getting pregnant, or problems with mental illness. 55% of homeless people ran away from home or were forced to leave home. 37% of homeless people are under the age of 25. You know, it's so easy to think you're the only one, even the really, even the crazier side of it, you know, and I thought, I really thought that I was insane, and if I ever told the truth about the things that were going through my head, that I would be locked up forever. Who is homeless? Someone who sleeps outside. Someone who moves from house to house, staying with different friends. Someone who doesn't have a permanent home. Someone who sleeps in a shelter. Many homeless kids are abused. Things got so bad for Sam that she ran away from home when she was 14. There was a lot of physical abuse. Um, and when I say a lot, like, I mean, I, I got the belt or fly swatters or spoons or vacuum cords and that kind of thing. And like my mom, no matter what, read to me every night before I went to bed, you know what I mean? So I don't know, it was really kind of a twisted situation. You know, like my mom, she drank a lot, and then whenever she'd like throw up in the bathtub, I would be the one who had to clean it up or things like that. Um, but at the same time, um, we always had home-cooked meals, and she, she read to me every night. What is abusive behavior? Constant hitting, verbal abuse, sexual abuse, neglect. It's a very desperate situation, being homeless. It's desperate because every minute you're like grabbing at the first thing that you can for to, to be fed, to get some sleep, to just have something, because you have nothing. Drugs always end up in the mix. Uh, when you're on the street, it's rare to find somebody who's not doing it, because it's cold, 
it's crazy, it's lonely, it's sad, and like when you're high, it's just better, you know, and it's, and it's sad. But I went from like smoking pot to shooting heroin in three years. After three years on the street, when she was 17, Samantha was rushed to the hospital with a serious sinus infection. Because she was using heroin, she hadn't realized how very sick she was. Slowly, it turned into pneumonia. Um, I got sick and went into the hospital. I was pretty convinced that I was like the only one who ever thought or felt the way that I did. I didn't know how to like reach out and ask for help. Do a snowman! Like... There are teens in New Mexico who are helping homeless teens. Seventh and eighth graders at Cleveland Middle School in Albuquerque pack meals and snacks for homeless teens who have nothing to eat on weekends when they're not at school. The food's important, but it, it's also important that they know there's someone that is trying to help, that they know there's people out there who, who care. It made me see that there are people that, that are my age that don't have the things that I have. They don't have a CD player. They don't have a place to sleep at night all the time. And it just made me like realize how lucky I am and that I can't take any of that for granted. Guilt doesn't make anything better that you just need to go out and do anything, do something instead of just feeling guilty about what you have and what they don't have. So um, it does make me feel guilty, but um, it makes me feel better that I'm doing stuff like this. It makes me feel like, like I'm not little. Like before the world seemed so big and now it makes me feel bigger that I could actually help. <laughs> I've been Sam, I've been Scam I Am. Mike gave me that name. Samantha did get help. Her mother recognized her own alcohol addiction and cleaned up. She was then able to help Samantha. Samantha recovered in the hospital and went to live with her mom. When I got clean, my mom had already been sober for a couple of years. She stopped drinking and she invited me to stay with her um, at her house until I was able to, to get a job and find a place of my own. And don't ever lose hope. It's so hard to be young and to have that kind of pressure in your head. You don't know what to do. Find somebody, somebody that you can talk to, an aunt, a, a school counselor, somebody that you could give like just 1% of your trust, you know, and, and talk to them because, you know, it's good to have an um, impartial person to kind of help you figure out like what's real and what isn't and, and what can be done. If you're a homeless teen, you can get help. If you're a teen who wants to help, try starting a project at your school. You can make a difference in someone's life. To get involved, contact the New Mexico Coalition to End Homelessness, 505-982-9000. Post Office Box 865, Santa Fe, New Mexico. 87504. On the web, www.newmexicohomeless.org. Well, there's a fella down the street who says he doesn't understand why those people live like that and no one wants to lend a hand. Give them food, give them shelter, give them jobs. It's not so hard, just as long as it is not in my backyard. What can be done about this problem? They all say and wring their hands. It's a scar upon the face of this land. Let's move them out. Let's move them on. Let's keep it quiet. Don't let on that they are sleeping in the streets in the good old USA. Yes, they're sleeping in the streets in the good old USA. They are living in the streets in the good